Oops. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. <laughs> Welcome to Quantum Catechesis. I'm Father Joe Krupp, and you are not in today. Today, today is Friday. Is it July yet? No, it's June 30th. June 30th. How many days in June? 30. Okay. It's the last day of June in the year of our Lord, 2023. And we will never see this day again. Um, today's Friday. It's question and answer day. And I'm a little nervous. And I'll tell you why. Because we just got it together, didn't we? Uh, it was like at 10 2, I'm shoving a burger down my throat as fast as I possibly can. I put a lot of laundry in the dryer. I put one in the washer. Carrie's banging away on the new computer. And all of a sudden it hit me. I am not capable of thinking today. So this this might be really interesting. By the time the show's done, some of you may become Buddhist. And if so, let me just say this. Sorry about that, Christ. Um, but all kidding aside, and that's not really kidding, you know. But uh, please submit your questions. Guys, this is the day to do it. We've only got like two or three here, right? And uh, so this is a good day uh, to get after your questions. Uh, and also because I'll probably screw them up. But I sucked down a half gallon of caffeine, a burger, switched the laundry. So now when the show's done, do you know this, Carrie? I'm folding six loads of laundry. Wow. Six. Like, I'd just been washing and drying, but not folding. And it's time to go to war. Like, Dad came to me this morning. He's like, you know, I don't want to say anything. i think, like, Pop, I'm so sorry. And then I blamed Carrie. So, uh... I do want to thank you all. We're getting donations for the new computer, and that's so helpful. It was crazy expensive. And you guys, what a blessing. Thank you so much. Um, this means the world to us. Uh, and I think, like, if I'm understanding these guys right, our show will go better now in terms of, like, poor Carrie, about, I'm going to guess, 30 to 40% of the time she'll start the show and then her computer will just kind of go, no, nah, we're not going to do that today. And she has to restart her computer and all this, and then we start late. Uh, but no more. No more. Um, well, today it was brand oh, new Oh, yeah, same thing happened, but Carrie, it was because Carrie didn't sign in. So this one is actually Carrie's fault. It never is. You know what I mean? But this time it actually is. It's never her fault. And I always say it is because then I feel better about me. And isn't that what's important here? Let's be honest. Uh, it's my fault. <laughs> so our first question, do you know of any good art that depicts Jesus as African-American or Middle Easterner? Same for Mary. Uh, not like specifically, but... You can search it. That's what we did for our statues. We wanted a darker skin, uh, Mary and Jesus. Uh, and, and, you know, it's a funny thing, guys. You got to remember, and I, I, I hope I say this well. The gene pool got all screwed up a few times. Uh, like, if you go, when I was in Israel, there were Israelis that were physically huge, blonde hair, blue eye. Right. And there were Israelis that were tiny with thick glasses and it just they're like everybody else. It, it's a melting pot and it's been a melting pot forever, um, like forever. It's it, and it's kind of crazy to think of. And often like we'll say uh, I think I taught you about this. People will say like I had a prof in college who was like Cleopatra was African. She was born in uh, Egypt. Uh, she was clearly black. And no, she was Macedonian. She didn't have a drop of African blood in her. Um, it, people were, it, it's hard to, it's hard to explain. We give a crap about skin color, I think more than any other time in history, oddly enough. For Romans, it wasn't about skin color, it was about where were you born. Uh, that was huge to them. But why am I saying this? <clears throat> what Mary, Jesus, Joseph, uh, looked like we, we really don't have a sense of that. Uh, I asked for darker skin just because that's how people in the Mediterranean look now. Uh, does this make sense? So uh, we just searched, didn't we care? We, we literally searched for statues and we said darker skinned Jesus, darker skinned Mary. Uh, and that's how we found it. So I can't give you a specific, but I can tell you the parameters we used. And I thought we had great success. What do you think? Yeah. Like our mama, uh, our statue of mama and of Joseph, 
Um, they don't look Northern Italian, right? With the blondie blue and, um, and not that I object to such things. You know, again, the whole thing is that they're universal saints, yes. you know. Yes. I saw, I think I told you this, I saw a picture of a Chinese Jew. A Chinese Jesus. And I, I joked about it. A Chinese Jew. And then my buddy who's a Jew wrote, well, there's a ton of Jews in China. And I had no idea. But anyway, okay. So uh, what is a good book to read about the magisterium? Oh, there aren't any. <laughs> Sorry. It's not a fun topic. Uh, it kind of depends, I think, on what you're looking for. Um, like if you're looking to be inspired, then I'd recommend um, Come Holy Spirit. What's his name? I read this book in 1994. Uh, Henri de Lubac. I can't believe I remember that. And I think it's D-E-L-U-B-A-C. Henri, it looks like Henry with an I. Henri de Lubac. And the book is Christ and the Common Destiny of Man. Um, that was, if I remember right, the book that primarily shaped my understanding of the church. Uh, good stuff. Good stuff. Um, yeah, the trouble is, of course, and I, I don't say this cynically at all, the magisterium hasn't exactly been a, a shining light in our history. Uh, you know, we've had some home run hitters and we've had some absolute demons, uh, there. It's, it's a place where people can, well, I think I'm going to let that go. So I don't know of a ton of books on that topic that would be inspiring, um, but I remember reading Christ and the Common Destiny of Man by Henri de Lubac, and it blew me away. And uh, good stuff. Okay. Next question. Next question. Yeah. What are the rules about use of non-red wine for Eucharist? At a mass in a different diocese that I recently attended, they used white wine that appeared to be from other fruit, peach or apple. Is that allowed? White is allowed, but certainly nothing but grape, right? Uh, uh, here's how the church rules put it. The wine that is used in the most sacred celebration of the Eucharist must be, quote, natural, from fruit of the grape, pure and incorrupt, not mixed with other substances, except water. Okay, So those are the rules. Um, there's also this phenomena of mustum, M-U-S-T-U-M, and that's uh, a kind of wine that priests who may be struggling with alcoholism, that they'll use. Uh, there has to be fermentation, but the way mustum is made... Um, they stop the fermentation almost right away or something. I can't remember. If you've ever tasted it, it is the most awful tasting stuff in the intestine. It, it, it is drinking straight battery acid. Uh, but um, that's often a whitish yellow color. But if they used peach or apple, that is a huge deal. It did not change to the blood of Christ. Right? To be clear. Um, hate to be that guy. Right? Uh, but white fine uh, it's as long as it's pure uh that it's fruit of the grape that it's natural and not mixed with other substances yeah okay uh father joe good canadian smoky afternoon what are your thoughts on when a child is about to die would you consider confirming the child oh yes that's actually what we do uh, if a child is dying, uh, we baptize and confirm them. Um, that is the original way of doing things. We separated baptism and confirmation some time ago. I I'm not clear when. I forget. But our Eastern brothers and sisters do not separate them. So when there's danger of death with an infant, we do the full court press. Baptism, confirmation, and then we give them envelopes. Okay. Is that, did I go too far? Okay, we don't confirm them. We baptize them and give them envelopes. How is that, Kara? Okay, she said I'm missing. Uh... Okay, can you explain the garment you were wearing at the funeral? No. What, what was I wearing? I think black. Oh, oh, you mean like in light of the other show? I was wearing all the stuff I told you about, right? I wore my alb, my amice, my cincture. My stole, my chasuble, and my savage good looks. 
Um, but I'm not sure what else to explain. Like, I'm assuming you saw a yesterday show. Was that yesterday? Two days ago? Two days ago. Yeah, where we went through all the vestments. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> excuse me. I, I'm not sure what the question means. Black. I think it was oh, black for mourning because it was a funeral. Yes. Yeah. So we wear black for funerals here at Holy Family. Um, I think churches are moving in that direction uh you can wear white or black i pick black because it's morning right this is sad i wish this guy hadn't died i i, I mean most times that's the way it is right i wish this person hadn't died um we mourn ah Okay, I know there was a recent supreme court ruling about religious freedom and sunday work what is your perspective on places that require work on Sundays but are non-essential jobs for the most part? I know we will not go back to the days where few places have to work like medical or emergency services. I would love to see us reclaim the Sabbath. And honestly, you're gonna, you might hate me for this, and I get it. Less about work and more about kids' sports. I really wish families were together on Sunday, not in service of their child, but in service of God. I do. I wish families kicked back together and gave themselves one day where you're not screaming, running from A to B, um, but where you're just together, uh, existing. Um, yeah. I really do. But I don't know about the Supreme Court ruling. You know, I think we should avoid work unless, uh, you know, again, you know, police or fire or medical or priest. People always ask priests, right, you know, Father, is it okay to work on Sunday? I hope so. I'm working my tail off. Did you find that funny at all? I Carrie doesn't find me funny today, and I don't know if I'm funny today. Oh yeah. I do. It's just. You got a lot going on. I can see you typing like a crazy woman. On over Fridays, there. I do have a lot. I, yeah. I mean, I'm trying to no, get No, I get it. You don't care. Everybody's No, I get it. You don't care. Easy to no, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so stupid. I, I told you it was going to be this kind of day. I do have a mute button. You do? Oh, she does. I'll behave. Carrie, you look very nice today. Uh, yeah. You're my favorite Carrie. Uh, okay. Except for my cousin Carrie. Okay. <laughs> and this one person I know named... I'm just kidding. Okay. Uh, so I don't know about the Supreme Court ruling. I know that we should avoid work. And you can define work as uh, tasks. I mean, like, if you love gardening... If gardening makes you happy, that's not work. Go garden on Sunday, right? If you uh, dedicate that work to the Lord, right? Lord, thank you for this uh, amazing garden. Help me to nurture it and treat it well. Uh, you don't want to do something that is work. Um, like, what don't I like to do? Let me think. I love to clean. So that's weird. I don't like outside work. I don't. Uh, so I wouldn't do outside work on Sunday. Well, it depends on the work. Yeah. Some of it I love. Yeah. What don't I like work-wise? I don't know. Wouldn't it be hilarious if I was like, I don't like mass. Sweating. You don't like sweating. I don't like sweating, but I'm a fat man, so I sweat if it's like winter. You know what? Here's one. When I was a kid, do you know about picking rocks? Yeah, you grew up in the yes. country. Okay. So for those of you who did not grow up in the country... The reason Michigan, Ohio, Pennsylvania are so fertile is because the uh, uh, glaciers, you know, a million years ago, slid toward the equator, melting along the way. And as they melted, they left good soil and they left rocks. So whenever you plow in the spring, it brings up rocks. Uh, it's almost magic. You can completely clear a field of rocks, and then the next year, when you plow, more rocks. And so the worst job ever was to pick rocks. I hated that. Uh, so I would never do that on a Sunday. I just wouldn't. Um, yeah, okay. Did I answer the question? Yeah. I don't know. Okay. Question for Father Joe. Demi Lovato, Lovato. Lovato. She's a singer, actress. Oh, yeah. okay. Uh, her name is not Megan Merkel, is it? Okay. <laughs> Did she marry a prince? That's what I need to know. Uh, released a song where all the proceeds go to abortion. Jesus, have mercy. Is there any 
way morally where I can listen to it so I can comment on it and help with speaking to others who will be influenced by it to help speaking the truth in a loving way. I, I don't know. I, I You know, you just want to make sure you're not pumping any money at them, right? Um, I think I'm going to say something that might not be good. I'm not sure. So what I'm realizing is, and I, gosh, I feel awful saying this. Okay, but I'm going to just say it and see how we do. We're getting dumber, right? I'm watching people argue, and I'm listening to people argue. And I'm no genius. I'm not, you know, I'm middle of the pack. But what I know is, like, you establish a point, you defend that point, and and that's how you argue, right? So... When it comes to abortion, you have now, if I read the polls right, Catholic women are one of the number one supporters, voting-wise, of what they call abortion rights. And some of that's because they've been lied to, right? There is a sick, sick lie about how these new abortion laws mean if you miscarry or if you have an ectopic pregnancy that that that's going to put you in jail that is a lie there is nowhere where that's true um and you can do your own research on this and see exactly what i'm talking about the the issue the only issue is is that a human being Right? If it's not, no problem. Just tell me when it becomes one and tell me what your criteria is for it becoming one. Now, when I've brought this up, the argument I always get back is, well, what about rape and incest? It's like, okay, we can deal with that in a minute. But remember the, the question, is that a human being? If it's not, when does it become one? And how do you determine that? Well, uh, you know, you can make abortion illegal, but it's not going to change the fact that there's abortions. Okay, yeah, and we can deal with that. Is there a human life? And if it's not, when does it become one? And how do you make that criteria? Right, and every time, I can't get any engagement on that. Or they'll say, well, it's just an embryo. But embryo is the Latin word for baby. Uh, okay. So when does it turn from non-human embryo to human person? That's, you get what I'm saying? And I don't think a lot of people are trying to be deceptive, but the people who taught them sure were. Well, what about my rights to my body? Oh my gosh, you have limited rights. I do too. Uh, and if you'd like proof, uh, get drunk while you're pregnant and get arrested. See how that goes. Or, God forbid... Uh, someone kill you and your baby. They get charged with two murders. Why? Because humans make humans. It, 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 you know, I mean, it's kind of that simple. Uh, the second that consumption takes place, get this, a completely unique and totally unrepeatable pattern of DNA emerges. Right? Think about that. We'll never see that DNA again. That combination of, of how it all came together. Uh, you get me like for me if like in this u.s we said okay it's a human at five weeks i'm just making a number up yeah and then we proceeded from there oh great now we can have a good discussion about abortion right i might not like the new law i'd prefer we said no abortion except to save mom right? No abortion except to save mom, no abortion, uh, you know, right? Uh, and instead, let's rip up all the labyrinth uh, rules about adoptions, right? Let, 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 let's move in that direction. But we don't even have a basic agreement that humans make humans. No, a man and a woman make an embryo. Oh, so she gives birth to an embryo? No, she gives birth to a baby. A what? A what? What's the magic moment? And how do you determine that? What is your scientific data? Right. Well, what about my body? Yeah, again, but it ain't yours. 
it's a totally unique set of DNA. It's a different DNA than yours. Yeah? Um, that's pretty important. Right? We wouldn't do this to puppies. Uh, and, you know, I don't know what to tell you. Rape and incest are awful and constitute less than 1% of all abortions. We do 2,800 abortions a day in this country. Right? What is 1% of 2,800? I, I don't know. Two? I'm bad at math. Less than that. Right? What is the, the number one reason? Birth control. I don't want to have a baby. I want to have sex. But I don't want to have a baby. Well, what other thing do we do, we do that? I wanted to shoot the gun. I'm sorry I killed somebody. But I wasn't trying to kill anybody. I was just shooting the gun. Oh, okay. We don't have a right to no consequences. You have a right to do anything within the law. But no rational system can be based on this idea. I absolve you from consequences. What? And if that's a human... And, it, and again, if you want to argue that, please do. I've just never had a rational argument about it. All I get is these cliches. You're just trying to control women by not killing 1,400 of them every day? That seems an odd position to take. And how am I controlling women by saying, don't murder, don't kill? If you can't have a baby, don't have sex. Right? Uh, or choose adoption. Praise the Lord. There are so many people just lining up and waiting. But like you talk to my folks and the same people who, who are promoting abortion were the ones saying to mom and dad, well, you can't adopt non-white kids. Why? White savior complex. What the heck is that? We just want to help. Uh, guys, this is a multi-billion dollar industry. And if you think they're not doing everything they can to make more money, you're wrong. Someone just told me this today. Did you see Planned Parenthood's new thing? What is it? Virginity is a social construct. That's their new ad. It's like, no, see, it's a term for someone who hasn't had sex. I know that's crazy. Uh, and they have this whole thing about how the patriarchy, because it turns out apparently there aren't any male virgins. What is that? Well, they need more customers, guys. They need more money. I, I'm sorry. I hate going on and on about this, but uh, I, I think I'll let it go now. And I'm sorry. I know I went on. But it's just when you talk about engaging people, I have not found a way yet. Because no one will argue. They'll shout slogans. Um, and it, 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 the only question that matters is, is that a human? That's it. Because... You're a human, so there's all kinds of stuff I can't do, even if you're inconvenient. Yeah? yeah. Anyway. Uh, how long after birth is a good time for baptism? I think pretty darn close. I think, you know, when it comes to baptism of a, of a little squiggly, you know, the key is schedule it as soon as you can and make sure you pick pa godparents not based on who you like, but on who will be a good example of the Catholic lifestyle to them. Yeah. If your godparents don't go to church and haven't gone to church, you did a bad job picking them, right? Or maybe they gave up after you picked them. There's nothing you can do about that. But um, yeah, I think pretty quick, you know, within a month. I don't know. I'm not a, I'm not a mommy. Mm-hmm. I mean. Yeah. Okay. The sooner the better, then right? I it's think, a protection you know, against evil, if nothing else. Yeah, then I think you probably want to explain that they can prepare for the baptism. Oh, that's a good point. At the church yeah. prior to the birth. When you're expecting a baby, not a fetus, when you're expecting a baby, uh, you can do baptism prep if you need to, right? Most churches will say if you did it once, you're good. It's not like, to be honest, baptism prep is pretty simple. I mean, it should be. I don't know. Uh, what is it? You're going to make promises in this ritual and i'm going to explain these promises to make sure you believe you can keep them yeah yeah, yeah. uh 
I was watching a movie about Sister Faustina last night. I saw the priest in the movie take off the maniple. I thought of the vestment video this past Wednesday. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, maniple, um, that's, I'm pretty sure, the word for fist or hand. I, I got to think about it. Uh, but anyway, it's a cloth that priests wore pre-Vatican II. Now, I think the TLM priests still wear it, but don't quote me on that. Um, and I don't know a ton about it, to be honest. Um, I can certainly look that up uh, so that I can learn more. But uh, a maniple was also the name of a Roman formation, you know. Uh, did you know this? So when the Romans would fight and phalanx, you remember I did that whole show on the phalanx. I think I did, this, right? That's yeah. Wikipedia, mind you. Yeah. What I just put in there. What is? Oh, got you, sis. Thank you. The maniple is a, maniple is a liturgical vestment used within the Catholic Church and occasionally used by Anglo Catholic and Roman and Lutheran clergy. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, anyway, I know more about the maniple phalanx than I do about the cloth. I'm so sorry. I will find out. Okay. Okay, narrow silk band worn over the left forearm with no. ends hanging down on each side. Sweet. Yeah, it's like a stole for your forearm. Except for mine, because it's huge. Okay, uh, whoops. Um, can you tell me more about three days of darkness and not being able to look outside? My prince, oh dear. My kid's, oops. Uh, there. sorry, it keeps moving. Yep. Upset. That's okay. Okay, my kids' principal gave them a beeswax candle so they could be prepared. This They are freaked out. I'm sorry. I don't think your principal should have done this. I'm going to be very blunt here. Um, and it's funny. I just read an article about this because I had a family call me. They've started going to Mass somewhere else because they moved to a different part of our diocese. And the priest is writing stuff in the bulletin and talking about three days of darkness and the beeswax candles and all this. And it's the same effect. It freaked these kids out. Uh, so I, I did a little research. There is no first, what do you call that, primary source for this vision. Now, you'll have people who say, no, no, Padre Pio had it. Or blessed, I can't remember her name, had it. But they can't show you where they wrote this. Okay. My primary issue with this is that it's, um, come Holy Spirit, you can research. And again, don't look at Catholic sites pushing their candles for you here. Go to actual historical sites and you'll see that the roots of this are in French nationalism. Okay. It's people using Catholicism to try to advance another cause. Uh, for those of you not familiar, there's a supposed prophecy that no one has ever been able to find, right? But it keeps getting passed around. Oh, these are the words of blessed so-and-so or of Padre Pio with the knowledge that no one has been able to locate the primary source, which is crazy. Okay. But that says there will be three days of darkness. Complete darkness will cover the earth. Uh, if you look out the window, you'll be killed. If you step out of your house, you'll be killed. If you, the only light you can have is a beeswax candle or another kind of candle. Um, I, I'm going to be candid. I'm always very open to the idea that I'm wrong. I want to be clear, whenever it comes to God, there's always mystery and wonder and awe and fear of the Lord. With that, this sounds absolutely nothing like the God I've come to know. And if I'm wrong, oh my gosh, Lord, forgive me. Please forgive me. But I can tell you this, my biggest argument against this supposed prophecy is that nobody can point you toward the original source. Okay, um, so I wish your principal wouldn't have done that. Um, the church has never spoken on this topic, which means a lot right there. Um, and if you read that prophecy, it's wild. Uh, but okay, so I'm so sorry they gave that to your child. It's this is the thing. Um, some of our fellow Catholics, I think, 
don't understand that when we're raising our children as devout Catholics, if the entirety of our approach is that God is a vengeful Lord who is going to uh, engulf the earth in darkness and kill almost everybody, all evildoers, and we're also teaching them that they are fundamentally flawed by original sin, I want you to think about what kind of kid that creates and what kind of adult that creates. Um, God is love, and all who live in love live in God. And again, I don't know. I, I'm broken. So my definition of love is wacky compared to God's. But when I read that prophecy, I think it's, uh, it just doesn't sound like God to me. It doesn't. You know, and there will be people who need an angry God. They need a God like this because that's the God they deserve. But if we got the God we deserved, we'd all be dead now. We got the God we got. This makes sense. And always be careful of those Catholics who can't wait to tell you me saying something like this is because it's a wimpy Catholicism or some stupid thing like that. Just go look at our dead God on a cross and tell me what you think. Yeah? They're more formed by American ideas of machismo than they are by the idea of Jesus meek and humble of heart. Yeah? Is this helpful? Yes. Okay. Um, okay, you recently answered a question on Catholic burial and cremation. And I started to think about the saints who are incorrupt. Wouldn't the fact that God uses the bodies of these deceased saints to give witness to the truth of the resurrection of the body and the life that is to come, wouldn't that be a sign from God regarding our physical bodies and that they should remain intact? Um, yeah, you know, this is a fine argument and one the church held for a pretty long time that we shouldn't cremate uh, because uh, of what you're saying, right? Where the church changed her mind to some extent is in two things. The fact that all, and, and I know this is a bad way to put it, all cremation does is accelerate the process that's going to occur. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't mean to, right? You leave that body in that casket long enough and it's going to be ash and dust. Um, even with all the weird stuff we pump into people, right? Postmortem. Uh, I tend to be more of your line of thought, like I'm not going to be cremated, right? Um, but the church has spoken that this is the way to go. It is why the church says... The best way to do a funeral if you're going to be cremated is the cremation happens after the funeral, right? The church is really clear on that, that if you can pull that off, that's what you should do. Um, how are we doing? Yeah. Oh, great. Okay. Father Joe, are you familiar with the prophecy of the popes and why Catholics believe this? There's a few of these, uh, so I'm not sure which one you mean. Okay, uh, but I'm familiar with a bunch of them. Uh, for example, at St. Paul Outside the Wall in Rome. Do you know this one, sis? Yeah. Oh, this is really groovy and kind of freaky. Okay. All right, so let's get it out there. Um, they built the church, uh, St. Paul Outside the Wall, and, and up above, I think you say a soffit. There's a soffit with these things about, I don't know how big they are because they're up there and I can't tell, but, uh, you know, I don't know. They're, they're ovals for pictures and they surround the church and the idea was well peter went in the first one then linus then cletus clement sixtus cornelius cyprian right uh every pope right so they made it so that as popes come there's a place for them and the thing was the prophecy was when we run out of spots the world's gonna end <laughs> we're one more pope if that prophecy is true we get one pope after this one i know that one I know there's, uh, is it St. Malachi, maybe, um, who had a, a prophecy about the popes. And it's kind of classic of prophecies of those days. You can kind of read anything into it, 
right? <laughs> right, like Nostradamus. You know, you can read it this, this way, you can read it that way, and it always seems to work, you know, which is part of the cleverness of it. Yeah, it's like horoscopes, same thing, right? They're written in such a way that they sound specific, and then you read it, and you're like, well, not really. Uh, but anyway, that prophecy has the list in order of popes. And again, if they're right, we got one more to go, which is kind of funny, too. I'd take it if the world ended soon. That'd be sweet. Uh, <laughs> what is Carrie's actual job description or title besides keeping Father Joe in line? Uh, Chief Exorcist of the Diocese of Grand Blank. That's her title. No, I forget. It's like Operation Queen Goddess something. Uh, do you remember your title? Or no? Uh, um, she doesn't use it. Okay, so... No, she doesn't remember. I just want you to be careful of that because there was a former pastor here yeah. a couple times ago Okay. that announced one day she's in charge of everything light touches. And that didn't go over well with all the rest of the gals. She's in charge with everything? Of everything that light touches. <laughs> Weird. Well, I think he thought it was funny. Nobody else did. <laughs> yeah. That's kind of a, So here's what I know. This place would collapse and fall no, into ruin. Not, uh, not true, not true, not true. Her primary job is to help with all like the buildings and grounds, like organizing what rooms are available for what, getting the people there to clean them, all the scheduling. So it's much more complicated than you'd think. And not, not to be funny. like, So let's say you want to use the hall on Tuesday. So what that means is Carrie's got to figure out how to have the cleaning person in before you use it and after the group before you uses it. And they can't be at another place doing another thing, right? You, you get what I'm saying? Like, it's, I don't know how she does it. I would literally, I've told her how many times I would lose my mind if I had Carrie's job. And she's good at it. Like, she'll get a million texts and she doesn't even, I, I do panic. I do, you know that. Like, if I'm trying to, like just today when we were talking and dad wanted to talk about something else, I get so flustered because it's so hard to focus on whatever I'm trying to talk about that if you divert me, I can't go anywhere. It's embarrassing. It's a limitation on my part. But I'm good at some things, bad at others. I'm not, I would not be good at her job at all. But in my defense, I don't think you'd be good at mine. No. You would be terrible at it. Yeah. Uh, so it's kind of funny. Uh, and and Chuck is neat because he's the good middle point. And what Chuck brings to the equation is a calmness, right? Which Carrie and I don't naturally have. Um, right? Yes. Yeah. And, and not that you're high strung, but you're intense like I'm intense, right? And so you need that third person on the team who's like, Maybe we can relax about this a little. Yeah. And then we're like, shut up, Chuck. You're stupid. In the name of Jesus. If you put at the name of Jesus on there, then it's legit. Just so you know. How are people doing? Are they bored? I feel like I'm not doing a good job. <laughs> oh, wait. I'm not supposed to say that. Sorry. I just remembered. I'm doing a great job. I think a lot of it is... Uh... Oh, dear. Okay. Someone asked... You talk about the protocol of Scion. Okay, no, uh, I don't talk about that. Um, the protocols of Zion are a fictional uh, creation of an anti-Jewish uh, group. It's this myth that uh, Jews came together uh, and organized the idea of kind of taking over the world. Um, and it, it was a big feature. Remember that show I did on anti-Semitism in Europe, yeah. um, which is vastly on the rise. Have you read about that? In both the U.S. and in Europe, anti-Semitism is on the rise. Now, it doesn't seem like the people who report news have decided that's newsworthy, which in itself would seem to indicate if the Jews are in charge of that, they're doing a terrible job. Uh, but that was funny. Okay. Yeah. Protocols of Zion are, are, uh, like that was part of Hitler's thing. That was, um, yeah. Oy. They're not real. 
Um, and again, just like the Three Days of Darkness, it's one of those, well, so-and-so found these. Well, then you read about so-and-so and they never found them. Right? There's no original source. It's just, it's just gossip in a sense, which is weird. Yeah, yeah. It seems like such a small word for such an awful thing. Um, will you talk about religious candles? I don't see them here, but I see them in supermarkets in the Southwest with higher Hispanic populations. In fact, I think I have. I do. This is my St. Mark D'Antonio candle. Do you see this candle? Can you see it? One of my students made this for me, and I think it's the funniest thing. When I showed Mark, he was horrified. Like, I think he threw up in its mouth. Uh, and so, of course, I kept it because he said, don't keep that. And I went, OK. So, yeah, it, it says on the bottom, St. D'Antonio. Uh, so, <laughs> had he not said throw that out, I would have thrown it out. But I'm 12 years old. So we <laughs> St. Mark, pray for us. Um, you know when they started making those candles, the seventh time we beat Michigan. Right? We beat them seven out of ten in one stretch. And it was so glorious. And I think the greatest moment in the history of college football for my life will be he has trouble with the snap. Like, if we never win another game, I'm fine. We got he has trouble with the snap. And I, like, sometimes if I'm having trouble sleeping, I just got to think of that. And then I smile. <sighs> For those of you who don't know about this, A, sinner. Uh, B, type into YouTube, <laughs> he has trouble with the snap. And what you'll see is it was another one of those years where states got no chance against Michigan. And there was, what, three seconds left. Michigan has the ball. And the game is won. You know how I know that was divine in intervention? True story. Yeah. Two seconds before that, some, the, uh, one of my, friend, my, J my son's friends said, it would take a miracle for us to win. Yeah. There was literally no way. To, I'll tell you what. This is the truth. I literally had typed up. I was still on Twitter. A tweet of, congratulations, Michigan. You won fair and square. Right? I'm a big believer in that. Right? If you win fair and square, congratulations. You beat a, They beat us fair and square. And all they had to do was kick the ball. Right? Which you do a lot in football. You can watch football your whole life and never see what we saw next. And I literally mean that. Was your thumb poised over the... Oh, yeah. Oh, I was I was literally packing up my stuff around my little TV chair. Like, all right, game's over. Dang it. And I was sad. I like beating Michigan, you know? And then something incredible happens. They hike the ball to the kicker who had one job. And instead of, like, catching the ball and kicking it, he fumbled it. So now at that point, no problem. Every football player knows you just literally pick it up and throw it or fall on it. Just literally fall on it. He's not a football player. He's from Australia. He was a soccer player or rugby or something. And so he tried to kick it. At which point, 387 Spartans murdered him in cold blood. The ball flies out of his hands and lands right in the hands of Jalen Watts Jackson, who then sprinted toward the end zone. Time's over. Time's up. If he falls down, the game's over. He got to the end zone. And you know he shattered his hip, right? He never played football again. Uh, he hit the ground hard, but he scored and we won. And it was the greatest thing I've ever seen in my life. Like, if I make it to heaven, I just assume that play is on repeat over and over. And it's purgatory for my Wolverine friends, and it's heaven for my Spartan friends. You know? How did we get here? Right. I don't remember. Oh, candles. Okay, so what's the idea? Okay, so let's pretend there's a real saint on here, not Saint D'Antonio of East Lansing. 
Maybe it's Saint. Uh, who were we just talking about? We were just talking about somebody. Uh, Padre Pio. So there's an image of Padre Pio. So what you do is you light the candle and you say, Padre Pio, please pray for me. As long as this candle burns, pray for me. And in return, every time you see that candle, you pray. So it's just a way, almost a kind of accountability, right? As long as that candle's burning, my prayer is going. And uh, so that's all. Um, do people use them superstitiously? Unfortunately, yes. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, don't do that. How was that? Okay. How we doing, sis? My wife just got accepted to the University of Michigan. Congratulations. Holy cow. What is she studying? Um, is that grounds for an annulment? Go Bucks. Yes. Uh, in the state of Ohio or Michigan, that is grounds for annulment. Now, should you go anywhere else, they'll be like, I'm sorry, what? And that's because those people are less than us. But if you... <laughs> No, but all kidding aside, please congratulate your beloved for me. Obviously, I'm a Spartan, but getting into U of M is a huge deal, and she should be crazy proud of herself. Um, absolutely states a better school. I mean, that's in the Bible. Yeah. Will says rugby. He is a rugby player. Nice. Thanks, Will. Which Will? Will Gall. Hmm. Hey, well, oh, by the way, um... I'm just so grateful, folks. I've been getting so many letters lately. I don't know what's going on. But uh, thank you for sharing this show with your family and friends. I can't believe this has value. I'm so excited. And even hearing from people they've returned to the church. Holy cow, you guys. Thank you. Oh, my gosh. Okay. So uh, here's the um, next question. Uh, when we pray the Apostles or Nicene Creed, especially when we're alone, not during Mass, but let's say during a private rosary, why do we pray it? And who do we pray it to? If we pray to God, why wouldn't we just say, I believe in you, O Lord? It's kind of an odd question, but I've often wondered why we pray it the way we do, especially when in private prayer. That's a good question. That's a fine question. Um, so for those of you not familiar, what we're talking about is when you're praying a rosary, or when you're at Mass and we say the Creed, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, right? We're like, well, who are we saying that to? In a sense, to each other, it's like a declaration of faith, yeah? We are, uh, in a sense, punching our entrance ticket for the train. Uh, that it's a prayer in the sense of uh, it's truth. And every time we speak truth, we're doing something beautiful. You always remember that. Like something as simple as we had a prophet seminary who pointed this out. When we speak, like this is a knife, right? And just by saying that, I have worshiped. Why? Because it's a knife. I'm speaking the truth. Right? Isn't that cool? Yeah. And we could get into that if you ever want. But it's why we fight so hard to find out what's true, to submit to what's true, even when it hurts us. Uh, or uh, why we fight for truth in general. Because truth is a person, right? Truth is a person. His name is Jesus Christ. He is truth in human flesh. And so whenever we speak the truth about the most simple thing to the most complicated thing, we are worshiping. We are making the universe a little bit better. Isn't that neat? Uh, so think of the creed that way. We are proclaiming to ourselves and to the world around us that which is true, that which I cling to. In fact, sometimes uh, if I feel spiritually attacked, I'll say the creed. I, I will. Um, just because that's a powerful thing. Right? I hope that helps. Um, Father Joe, do you believe in the illumination of conscience where there's going to be a moment where we'll all see each other's soul as is, and there will be a great sign in the sky to wake up Christians and stop the insanity. I've been reading a lot about this lately. Gosh, I've never heard of that. I will look it up, though. It sounds fascinating. Um, I'm sorry, I'm not, I, I can't answer it because I don't know, but that sounds fascinating. I'd love to check it out. Uh, so I will, and hopefully I'll have something for us next week. Can we save that question, sis? Okay. Um, uh, uh, Sabine. Oh, Sabine, my little German girl. And I don't know if you're, yeah, that's a female name. 
Sabine. Okay, explain she asked about the protocols because she heard you talking about the darkness. Oh, nice. She's on the Autobahn. My lady, tell me you're flying. This is... <laughs> so, Sabine, okay, my dad, German uh, first generation, um, he raced cars uh, in younger days and in his middle age years. He, he was a drag racer and, and a phenomenally skilled driver. You, you just can't imagine, right? And he pilgrimaged back to Germany Gosh, mom was still alive and she was healthy. So I'm going to say 13, 14 years ago. And he had two goals, right? Beer and the Autobahn. But he found out you really shouldn't mix those two things. I thought that was funny. <laughs> so being on the Autobahn, I would love for you to just put that foot right down and giddy up for your second favorite priest in Michigan. There you go. Yeah. Uh... I was watching a movie. Oh, wait. Nope. I already answered that one. Okay. No, nope, we're good, sis. Uh, are you taking a break this summer? Where are you going? What are you doing? Why, yes, I am. I'm so excited. Uh, not next week, but the week after, I will ascend to the heavens, body and soul, uh, for 10 days. What do I do? I go to my cousin's house on Lake Michigan, and Father Jeff and I go there every year. Um, and honestly, I just read, eat, sleep, walk, uh, and that's kind of it. Um, you don't know <laughs> how much I look forward to this. And I always bring work and say I'll do it, and I never do. But this year, I think I will. I think I'll do it because I'm very excited about this work. Uh, but be this as it may, um, you'll see, uh, what is it? We're going to try, I think, to record some shows or something before I go. Um, and by the way, I need topics, you guys. I need topics. Uh, please uh, send them to Carrie. If you send them to me, there's a 40% chance they'll get to Carrie. I'm not bright. But send us the topics you wish to know about, uh, and I will give it my best go. Um, uh what were we talking about? Oh, so, yeah. So I'm going to go away, not the Sunday that's about to happen, but the one after that, and I'll be gone for 853 days. You're going to let that go. Are you, Carrie's fair. Huh? Are you going to leave your phone here, though? No. No, because I need to call Dad every day. You know? I do. He worries. Like, even last night, what was I doing? Oh, yesterday, remember? I was at that priest meeting, and he, like, three times when I was leaving was like, y you need to call and tell me. You're okay. So do you remember I would text you because I couldn't get out of these meetings. We were just, we did not stop. It was awesome. But it was, uh, I think that's why I'm so tired today. I think my brain just got stretched as far as it can go. Lisa Kudas ran the day and all that chick does is hit home runs. I'm serious. I, I, I've decided, I've started calling her our, our little Bavarian girl, right? Little blonde hair, blue eye, incredibly organized and very much in charge. She's our little Bavarian girl. Yes. Um, so that's what I'll be doing. I go see D'Antonio. He's he lives right nearby, and we always go and spend some time with him. Um, sometimes we go somewhere and do something, but we try not to plan. Because honestly, I just read, 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 and like I get up, I don't even put my hearing aids in. Do you know this? No. Oh my gosh, because I can't hear crap, and and it's glorious, right? It's so quiet. And, you know, and Jeff and I, I don't mean this, we're best friends, right? We've been friends since we were boys. And we don't talk. Like, maybe once you pass two, right, or if the Tigers are on, we'll turn on the Tigers. But it's just kind of funny. It's just, oh, I can't wait. And I've. I told Carrie, when I realized that vacation's coming, because in my head I kept saying to Carrie, oh, it's not till July. And she was like, dude, it's July next week. Boom! You know, I just, oh my gosh. Uh, I bought books. And all brain candy. I'm not going to learn a thing. They're asking oh. what books. Oh, okay. So you may remember I'm a big Mark Lawrence fan. He published a new book called The Book That Wouldn't Burn. Um, and it has been so hard not to read it. Seriously. <laughs> But I've been saving that puppy for like four months. 
Uh, the second one, uh, I bought the la the latest series by, oh my gosh, I just froze up on his name. Uh, he writes space operas. Um, oh my gosh. I can't believe I forgot his name. Some of you might hate these books if you read them. I'm goofy for them. Uh, he wrote Judas Unchained. Can you look up Judas Unchained? Um, I think he's phenomenal. Uh, and these are complicated. They call them space operas. And all it means is it's a... Yeah, Philip Hamilton, right? Peter Hamilton. Peter Hamilton. If you like space kind of fiction stuff, rock that. Um, it's fantastic. Uh, and read the Judas Unchained. Uh, and what are the other books in that series? I can't remember them all. But um, physical books or uh, Kindle? Well, not Kindle. I don't. I don't like Kindle. I use Kobo. Uh, it's a German company. They make these e-readers that I think are better than the Kindle, a lot better. Uh, and authors get a little bigger cut that way. Right. Uh, Amazon isn't super good to its authors unless they're huge. The other problem I have with Kindle is they'll publish anything. So I would buy these books that look phenomenal and you read it and you're like, did an eighth grader write this? Right. And, and I'm not that picky. I'll read garbage. Right. Uh, but Kindle doesn't you can self edit. And like you look at Brandon. Well, Stephen King. Right. Uh, who's to me one of the best authors I've read in my in the, these days, right? He has editors. You should have an editor, right? She, she, everybody should have someone looking at their work and going, yeah, this sucks, uh, or fix this wording. Uh, and the self-publishing phenomena has really read to, led to some bad writing, like one that killed me because I was so excited. It was an idea. Wow, and I hope this isn't mean. Well, it's not like the guy reading, wrote it, is listening. Um, this was the idea. You had uh, 12 Marines who were in Iraq or Afghanistan, I can't remember which, and were quite literally transported into the Roman Empire at the time of Julius Caesar. Okay? Uh, and what I love, I love this kind of thing. They didn't say how it happened. It just, boom, it happened. What the heck? And it's just such a great idea. Like what happens when you have 12 armed trained Marines with guns against uh, the most disciplined army in the, you know, what would happen? It was fascinating. It was fascinating. The book sucked. It was it was like here's a great idea. There's another one that had a great idea. It was what if the Roman Empire in the West never fell and was still alive today and controlling Europe? And ergo, because I don't know if you know this, Romans sucked at seamanship. So we never got over to North America. So what happens when this entire North American population of Native Americans uh, never got all the diseases we gave them and actually grew as a society. What would happen when one bumps into the other? Again, phenomenal idea. And whoever edited that book should be taken out back and beaten. I was so disappointed because I, I kept reading just because it was like, this is a great idea. But it was so horribly written, I wanted to die. Um, yeah. Anyway. Uh, oh, is it time? Okay. So, I don't know. I've done better. But this was what I had today. And uh, I'm excited to see you beautiful people on, well, for Sunday Mass or whatever. Um, the one thing I got to tell you, if you would, think about this. Pray for me a bit. Uh I felt like I knew where the Lord wanted me to go on my homily. And this morning, I think he told me that wasn't him. So I think I know where he wants me to go, but I don't like putting a homily together for Sunday on Friday. That is uh, not something that makes Jojo happy. And I like where I think the Lord's taken me, but boy, it's a tough message. So, you know, if you would just pray for me that I listen to the Lord and not myself, 
right? Even though I'm so devastatingly handsome, I can barely take my eyes off me. Um, but you know how that feels. <laughs> <laughs> so uh tomorrow i'll be on the road a lot please pray and uh i guess that's what we got today sis yeah, yeah? you guys thank you for supporting this thanks for tuning in thank you for praying for me thank you for listening and i i hope it doesn't this isn't bad but i got it and thank you for sabine why because she's our german girl <laughs> the world needs more germans <sighs> all of our cars would run very well all of our guns would have too many parts. You know that about German guns? I don't know what it is. They love a million tiny little parts. So if I took apart my um, Colt 1911 and showed you, it's like four parts. You take apart my SIG or, or, or anything from Germany, and there are eight million little parts in there. It's hysterical. I don't know what's up with that. <laughs> But anyway, uh, thank you guys uh, in all sincerity for putting up with me, for sharing this show, for uh, your kind letters and words. Um, I don't even know what to say. I don't. Um, but uh, salad pray. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Oh, Heavenly Father, thank you for the wonders of your love. And Lord, so many things are put out there as from you that aren't from you. We're asking you to protect us from them. And Lord, protect us from that thing inside of us that needs other people to hurt for being sinful or sinning. Protect us from that, Lord, really. Instead, help us to embrace you who call us to repentance out of love and for love. And Lord, we ask that you bless us so that whatever way we use to help us pray, we would trust that the prayer is the goal. That you might not have the same goals as us, but that we can trust that the important thing is that we prayed. We have given the situations in our life to you. And all of this, Lord, is so that we can love you better and love you like you deserve. Because that's where we'll find joy. That's where we'll find wholeness. And so, Heavenly Father... We ask that you look in our hearts and see the people we love and worry about. And we ask you to look and, and see all the circumstances that we fret about. And no matter what the person, no matter what the situation, we give it all to you because we love you so much and we trust you. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. My Kung Fu is strong. I'll see you beautiful people later. And until then, peas are my gift to you. <laughs>